Hi, I'm Ramses Vanderslice, and welcome to The Truth. You might know me because I'm a stratospheric marketing amplifier, conspiracy theorist, motivational speaker, horse wrangler, and also God King of the World. In my last video, I scientifically proved how Vanessa Carlton is secretly an unclassified cryptid. If you want to watch that video, you can. Why don't you? But if you want to watch this video, we're going to be talking about my friend, Bobby. But before we do that, just a quick shout out to our sponsor, Brody's Beaver Pelts and Pelt Accessories. Brody's Beaver Pelts, they're good if you need them. The year is 1947. The Franco-Prussian War has just ended. Harry S. Truman has dropped a large iron dome over the Soviet Union, marking the beginning of what historians now call the Truman Show. And somewhere, underneath the Gulf of Mexico, in the placid still waters, in an undisclosed sea lab, Robert Bobby the Bob Kimball is born. What do we know about Bobby? Not much, only that he is and that he is cursed. The schemes of Bobby between the years 1947 and 1976 are hotly debated by experts. There isn't even a photo of him in those formative years of his life. I know what you're thinking. Now, a mysterious white man showing up out of nowhere with a bedraggled gaggle of peasants and fishermen trailing behind him? That sounds a lot like Jesus. Well, just like Jesus, Robert Kimball joined the band Toto, eventually penning such classics as Rosanna, Hold the Line, and Please help, I cannot leave the band Toto or pee sitting down, although I don't think these two problems are related, but you know, I didn't want to make two appointments because my schedule's pretty dang full. Radio edit. But the most famous words to ever exit Bobby's mouth are, I bless the rains down in Africa. The number one best-selling song about the largest country on earth, Eritrea. You've heard it before. Even if you're just now hearing it for the first time, You've heard it before. Its cosmic truth is so ineffable, so primordial, that one can no more ignore it than ignore being. Its very melody is written into the genetic code of every living human and creature on this earth. But the question remains, does it slap? I don't know, would you say that Africa... The lyrics of this banger, however, belie... The lyrics of this good song, good, good song, belie a dark secret. In my last video, we proceeded from the assumption that all song lyrics are sincere admissions of literal fact. If you disagree with me about this, don't. If you still feel the need to disagree with me about this, even after I've expressly told you not to, then um, I don't know, go down to the comment section and type disagree. Uh, don't tell me why though, just the one word is fine. What then? is Africa's heart of darkness. There it is. There is nothing that a hundred men or more could ever do to take Bobby Kimball away from you. This raises a lot of questions and it implies a lot of implications. The first and most important, that there is something that 99 men or less could do. But how is that possible? I mean, what circumstances could exist to create this truth? The way I figured it, there was some sort of force multiplier attached to Bobby Kimball that would increase exponentially the more people that he fought. But that raises a few questions though. Question number one. Since Babe 2, Pig in the City is directed by George Miller, does that technically make it a Mad Max prequel? And question two, how? How? One must not only ask what a power is, one must also account for its birth. You see, Bobby Kimball stopped an old man along the way, hoping to find some old forgotten words or ancient melodies. That old man said nothing, glared, wordlessly, and in that glare, he was irrevocably cursed. You see, there are only three things that old men are liable to ever give you in this lifetime. 
and those would be a heightened sense of one's own mortality, swords, neko wafers, and an antiquated legislative system propped up by obfuscated sources of capital, but also curses. And while two of these three things are rad, it's never worth the risk of getting neko wafers. At this point, the astute among you might say, Ramses. While it is true that Bobby Kimball does sing the lead in the chorus of the song Africa by Toto, he doesn't actually sing the verses. That would be uh, David Page, right here. And yeah, okay, you're correct. But consider this, who here is more likely to be cursed? You might be tempted to say Page, seeing as he is Pendulette's clone and thus genetically predisposed to being a magician. But here's the thing, magic is a lot like sex. If you have to tell everyone you're doing it, you're not doing it. Add to this the fact that Toto now seemingly shuns Bobby for his inhuman powers, and the page question is put to bed. He's singing about Bobby, and not vice versa. So we have our case. Bobby was cursed by a nameless old man, giving him the power to resist a number of men equal to or greater than 100. Now, before we continue onward, I do want to dispel a couple of myths. Myth number one is that you can't mathematically model a curse, but of course, that's, that's not true. For those of you that want more literature on the subject, I would recommend that you read Naomi Klein's breakout novel, Spirit Models, Ghosts, Graphs, Gaffs, and Goofs. Also, for simplicity's sake, we are going to assume that Bobby Kimball is a perfect sphere and contained within a vacuum. Congratulations, we've just killed Bobby Kimball. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Bobby cannot die. I'm not gonna die! Bobby! <laughs> 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 And the last thing, no discontinuous functions, all right? They're garbage. You can't just draw lines wherever you feel like it and say that they mean something. You're an adult now, David. Act like it. That's math. And if you think it's lame, then you can jump in front of a train. <laughs> just kidding, don't do that. Our infrastructure is already crumbling as it is. And there are plenty of other reasons not to kill yourself, I'm told. After much discussion with the great hooded figure, I've narrowed it down to three potential models, all eminently logical, mathematical, and most importantly, biodegradable. Model number one, the impossible Bob. In this model, Bingo Campbell becomes exponentially stronger with each successive assailant added to the assailant pile. Immediately we run into an issue. How do we measure the strength of a man? In fist fights, in men's rights, in bruises, in bags of concrete, in bicep, in gun, in beating your... There are any number of standardized metrics for measuring strength, depending on where or when you live. The most common in America is the number of chairs you can carry concurrently to impress your celibate crush at a youth group function. If you live in communist Europe, however, you might be more familiar with the Yeller Index, which is how many videos of old Yeller need to be playing simultaneously to make you cry. For me, it's 0.5. I need a metric that would account for all manner of strength. Resiliency, muscle, deadlift, breakbeat, shreddedness, X factor, the juice, gex factor, and so on and so on. Something that would scale effortlessly in my tireless quest to do what Newton once called as little math as possible. Something that would make those snobs at the Academy jealous, something much more elegant than anything they could come up with. Thus, I invented the man strength. The man strength is a measure of pure potential. Applied to no one, it means nothing. But applied to someone, well, now we're getting somewhere. Man strength measures from zero to one, where one measures peak personal performance. In an ideal world, unburdened by disease, injury, disability, exhaustion, distraction, and condensation, we would all be at one man strength at all times. In the real world though, I probably hover around a 0.25. I don't sleep enough. Zero, on the other hand, represents complete inertia. Inertness? Inertinity. Wet noodle, flaccid. Limp. Think uh, someone in a coma, or someone who's just been hit in the head by a very large rock, or someone uh, sleeping, I guess. I've carved out an exception here. It's important to note for automatic functions like respiration and circulation. So zero doesn't mean death, okay? And you might say, well, Ramses, what about seizures? Those are involuntary. But look, you, this video is so long, 
as it is, do you want me to spend another week cajoling diarrhea into it? According to science, and this very good chart, we can expect that the strength of the group will increase by one man strength for each person added to that group. This only makes sense. We would expect that two men would fight with the strength of two men and not, for example, half a bonobo. We can see here also that Bobby starts at one man strength and exponentially increases until he overpasses the group at 100. Now, at this point, you might have a little bit of a qualm. Namely that one level 100 Bobby wouldn't always beat 100 level one lumpen proletariat in battle, surely. But if you look at the numbers a little bit more closely, it becomes a lot clearer that this is correct. Honestly, Bobby becomes nigh impossible to beat around 80 or 90 attackers. At 50 attackers even, he becomes a legitimate threat. At that point, he's fighting at about 10 man strength. To put this in perspective, I made some conservative estimates. I, for example, estimated that Bobby can, on a good day, strike with 250 pounds of force. That's not unreasonable. I mean, look at this boy. He's got some beef behind his tomatoes, if you know what I mean. Anyway, at 250 pounds on a normal day, at 10 man strength, Bobby could break your femur with a single punch. Around 80 or 90, he would be causing massive internal hemorrhaging with a single blow, if he didn't kill you instantly, that is. At 409 assailants, given a conservative estimate of two meters per second on his punch speed, his fist would break the speed of light and he would be able to, I don't know, punch a hole in the moon if he wanted to. Now, I'm not saying that Bobby will punch a hole Listen in the moon. Up. I'm gonna punch a hole in the moon. Huh. Okay, well, anyway, it's not just his offensive capabilities that get magnified in this way. At 100 people, he becomes 100 times harder to hurt, 100 times harder to break. At a certain point, he would become functionally impervious to human blows. Now, I didn't do the math, not because I'm lazy, but because other reasons, but rest assured, the math says that it would happen. If model number one is correct, then Bobby holds a power hitherto unseen in this world. At 200 assailants, he could lift a frigate over his head. Truly, we should weep. But what if Bobble Crob Kibble the Shark Kimbo didn't get stronger as each person was added to the assailant pile? What if instead he became heavier? Enter model number two. In this model, we want to graph how heavy Bobby would have to be in order to be unliftable and unmovable at 100 people. Now, for this one, I didn't go with the man strength as our unit of measurement. I went with just straight up kilograms. Now, for safety's sake, we are going to assume that each one of the people trying to move Bobby, in this case, is a clone of Benedict Magnuson, professional deadlifter and professional big boy. Benedict Magnuson has the world record in the deadlift at 460 kilograms, but we're gonna bump that up to 500 just to be safe. Call me Magnus Sinanimus. <clears throat> Magnus Nan, Magnan. Call me a magnet. Each Magnuson that gets added adds a potential 500 kilogram limit to the weight that they can lift as a group. Bobby, however, starts at 100 kilograms, estimated from bone tissue and size looking. We can see here on this graph that at 100 Benedict Magnusons, Bobby Kimball becomes too heavy to lift or move at 54,000 kilograms. That's heavier than the weight load capacity of the original 747. And at 112 people, he would weigh as much as the 747 itself. At 140, remember that frigate we were talking about earlier? Well, that's Bobby now. Four million kilograms of Bobby but it gets way, way worse. A pertinent question. How is Bobby achieving these massive gains? Because I've been eating a dozen raw eggs every day and Costco won't even let me back. Is he getting bigger or is he getting denser? The answer is of course, he's getting denser because otherwise his head would leave the atmosphere at a relatively early stage and not at all because I didn't feel like doing the math about the volume of Bobby Kimball and how it scales. Um, anyway, I uh, crunched the numbers. And at 484 Magnusons, Bobby Kimball becomes as massive as the moon, thus causing a chain of catastrophic weather events and probably ending all life on Earth as we know it. If every one of my current subscribers decided that they wanted to fight Bobby Kimball at the same time, he would become more massive than the Earth itself. Now, you're probably wondering at this point, just how many people would have to fight Bobby Kimball in order for him to collapse in on himself and turn into a black hole? 
Well, the answer to that question is actually kind of complicated, right? Because not all black holes are formed from stars that weigh the same. The short answer is that uh, the interior fusion that's happening in a star puts out more or less energy depending on the makeup of that star and the mass of that star. So hotter stars that are expelling more energy from their core will actually collapse at relatively larger masses than cooler stars. So the question then becomes, how hot are Bobby Kimball's insides? Despite the fact that I've emailed him numerous times under numerous pretenses, Bobby Kimball refuses to answer this question. So although I can't tell you the exact moment when Bobby Kimball would tumble infinitely inward and consume all like the hungry god he is, I can say that the upper limit would be at 651 Benedict Magnusons, at which point he would become a black hole. Think about it this way. If Bobby Kimball's at a concert, let's say he does a whoopsie, says a racial slur. Oh no, now everyone in the crowd hates him. Bam, black hole, we're all dead. Do you see how volatile this is? We're all f***ed. But of course, that's only if Bobby's boiling on the inside. If he's relatively cool, like the rest of us, then chances are he would collapse into a black hole much sooner. Either way, just gotta be careful, I guess. But that's only model number two. Before we go to model number three, a word from our sponsors. Buy the belt. Buy my belt. You want to buy my belt, don't you? I know you do. Buy it. Welcome back to model number three, the final model, and in many ways, the scariest. I'm talking, of course, about Necrobob. I'm gonna level with you. Necrobob is bad, real bad. Not collapsing the fabric of reality bad, but not everything has to be apocalyptic around here all the time. You know, sometimes things can just be mildly catastrophic, as in the case of Necrobob. Now, Necrobob does not get stronger. Necrobob does not get heavier. Necrobob does not change at all in the face of adversity. Instead, the strength of the group weakens as each member joins it. So thus we see, in the beginning, the strength of the attackers climbs as you would expect, but suddenly it plateaus around 50 attackers, and then starts to plunge. And then at 100 attackers, we see that the entire strength of the group is measured at one total man strength meaning that each man in the group is fighting at one one hundredth of his potential strength. At 101 attackers, the group strength rating reduces to zero, thus inducing instant paralysis in everyone involved, except Bobby, of course. This is where this theory differs from general hench theorem. For those of you that missed intro to henching in school, general hench theorem states that all observable hench people have to share the same health bar, provided the hero's aim is just and right and true and good. In those cases, let's say it would take eight punches to injure a one hench person. It would take one punch to injure eight hench people. Notice though that there's no observable point at which all hench people lay down and take a nap. A hench always maintains an aura of strength, even if he can be killed by a lightly tossed eggplant. It's past 101 people though, that this model kind of goes off the rails because then we veer into the negatives. And what does that mean? Well, the way I figured it, if one represents peak vitality and health, then its opposite, negative one, would represent death. Anything between zero and negative one represents active atrophy, the loss of muscle and vitality, your soul leaving your lips. So I know you wanna know, how many people have to fight Bobby Kimball before the strength of each person is reduced to negative one, thus inducing instant death? The answer is 200. If 200 people decide that they wanna drag Bobby Kimball away, they will all die instantly. The rules of Bob's power are not known to any living person. What, for example, classifies as an assailant? Is it based on proximity? Do I need to be within uh, observable distance and express my intentions of moving him before I can be added to the group? 
Or can I be anywhere in the world and simply wish to move Bobby Kimball? If 200 people happen to be wishing to move Bobby Kimball at the exact same moment anywhere in the world, will they all instantly die? And where does Bobo Cobalt stand? Does he fight for good or for ill? Is he judge? Executioner? Or has he transcended the need for our paltry ethics? I needed answers. I needed wisdom. And so I turned to the one source that I knew would be knowledgeable, measured, and very sober in its response the general public. We're here in the heart of downtown Gary, Indiana to crowdsource some actionable solutions for the coming of Bob Eclipse. Bob Apocalypse? Whatever, it's fine. Let's go. Ooh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Oh, hell yeah. Grip it and rip it. Can we wait until a goal is scored, perhaps? Hello, sir, can you answer a question? Can you answer a question, What's sir? Up? <laughs> sir, uh, what do you think is the greatest enemy of the American people at the moment? Me. What? It's very often. <laughs> All right, so enemies of the Republic. Um... Hi, excuse me. Yeah, I, uh, can I ask you, what do you think the greatest threat to America is at the moment? Oh gosh, I'd say global warming because like, my species is dying out out here, you know, man? I'm just trying to be a flower in this really toxic world. Global warming, interesting. Yeah. Uh, would you say that maybe it would be Robert Kimball of the band Toto? Yeah, no, he, I know. He's completely silent. I didn't know he was there at all. What's the greatest threat to America at this moment? Illiteracy. Illiteracy. How do you spell that? What do you think is the greatest threat to America currently? No? No? Would you say that it, it might be... Are you familiar with the band Toto? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. Hello, sir? Hi, can I uh, can I ask you a question real quick? No, sorry. No, no, no. Can I just? It's just real quick. Just a quick, quick, quick no, question. I'm sorry, I really don't. Um, no, just it's it's okay. Like it's just one yeah, thing. No, okay. It's just uh, no, really it's just one thing. Can I? Um, so what would you say is the yeah, greatest? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm okay, no, but the greatest enemy of the republic. Far from aiding me in my quest, the people seemed not to know who Baby Cable even was, let alone that he posed a threat that could potentially annihilate the entire Earth. I phoned the authorities. No response. I called the dog catcher. It wasn't his... It was... I don't know why I did that. It was, it's not his job to deal with these things. I told everyone that I knew. And they said nothing. Like they always say nothing leaving me the sole arbiter of truth, and you blind as a bat. And every day I talk, and every day you say nothing. Every day you say nothing and I talk. Say something, admit something, say that Robert Kimball is going to kill us. Do it, you coward. Admit it, and then, and only then will I walk away.
If you would like to see more of these videos more often, share them. If you would like to see less of these videos less often, look over there. And uh, if you want to talk to me, you can't. Look, there's only one thing that's keeping me alive at this very moment, and it's the slow drip of anonymous approval that I get online. Uh, so by that metric, I have been dead for the past few months, but no, actually still, st still, um, but 